If you're wanting to step into improv quilting, you're going to be interested in the book I'm talking about today. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts, and today I'm taking a look at Adventures in Improv Quilts by Cindy Grisdella. Now, in a previous video, I had talked about one of her other books called Artful Improv. I had to think about the title for a second there. And you can find a link to that either up above or down below in the description. This book is similar, but a little bit different. So some of the information in the front of this is similar to what she had in her other book, Artful Improv, because she talks about improvisational quilting, what it is. She talks about the what if concept, which is what if I try to do this with the blocks or move them around different ways. She has that information in her other book as well. So the front part of the book, they both stay on their own, but the front part of the book is similar. So there's some repetition, but there's also some different information as well. So if you uh, don't have the other book, you could get this one and still get the same information at the front as far as choosing color schemes, uh, different design principles, that type of information, which is really important when you're doing improvisational quilting. Okay, she talks about choosing color and size. Okay, she gives you lots of photos to show you the different projects that she's talking about. So for example, here she's talking about solids versus prints. So she has some uh, photos of solid improvisational quilts, some that have pattern fabric in them because you get kind of a different look, right? <laughs> For sure. And a lot of times when you see improv, you are seeing more solids, I think, because they read as modern quilts. But it's not to say you can't use your printed uh, pattern fabric in improvisational quilts as well because that's probably what most of us have in our scraps and that's where you're going to go for most of the fabric when you're making an improv quilt at least in my opinion. You also have to be aware of what colors you're putting together and so she talks about the color wheel. This one here is the Essential Color Wheel Companion and this is by Joan Wolfram. It's published by or I should say produced by, sold by CNT Publishing. So if you look in the description below, I'll have a link to that particular color wheel if you're interested in it. It is one of the ones I've recently got and I really like it because it's got 24 colors in it and it has the different color schemes on it too. So it's a great reference tool to have just in general when you're quilting, not just for improv quilts. And I mentioned that she talks about design principles, elements and principles of design. So she goes into depth about that, lines, shape, texture. Uh, she talks about design principles of balance, focus, having a focal point. Again, she has this information in her other book, but actually the samples she's using here are totally different. So even if you do have her Artful Improv book, it's well worth taking a look at the information in the front of this particular one, because it's really important to consider design principles when you are making improvisational quilts. You're not just throwing fabric together, there's actually thinking behind it. So she goes into that, so you've got that in your head when you want to create your own improvisational quilt project. Then she talks about three ways to create improvisationally such a big word, isn't it? Improvisation, improvisationally. And so she talks about, and this is somewhat um, about design as well, because she talks about having one repeating unit, which is repetition, which is another design uh, principle. She talks about, if what if you have multiple different, different units, like different blocks in here? How are you going to put those together? What are some ideas there? And then she talks about free cutting and sewing, which sounds so scary, right? If you're talking about using a rotary, rotary cutter and not using a ruler, but you can do that with improv, right? So, you know, you should give that a try, right? Keep your fingers out of the way for sure. But you don't necessarily need to use a ruler when you're doing improvisational quilting and you're cutting the pieces to put together for that project. Now, what's really interesting about this book, I think, is that she has these guided exercise in it. So she's talked about, you know, thinking about color, thinking about principles and design, now let's get into actually making some uh, improvisational blocks and quilts. So she's going to talk about, she starts off with playing with color. I mentioned color before, right? So she actually talks about how to put this together in uh, this particular case is with these improv uh, circle or half circle units, round units, whatever you want to call them. What does she call them? Curves. Okay, curves. Sorry. <laughs> they, they look like quarter circles to me, but she just calls them curves. Okay. And so she's taking you through this exercise to make this particular project called Retro Circles. And so what I like about this is that she's taking you by the hand, almost like having her sitting next to you and saying, okay, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And we're going to go through and actually create these different units and then we're going to look at them and we're going to say okay I've got these curved blocks what am I going to do with them how could I put them together what are some ideas she also goes on and continues with this theme 
with a log cabin type block, which I really like for improv. This one's called Blue Puzzle. So she's going to tell you different ways, different, it's really kind of different thoughts that you can have about this. Okay, so what if you tried this? What if you tried that? Consider this, consider that. So you can actually work along with her, as it were, work along with the book and create these different units. Okay, so she goes into a lot of detail about these units and there's different blocks, of course, that you can work on. So I like the fact that she's giving you these exercises so you can actually start making your own improvisational project, kind of starting off slow and the different thought processes that you need to go through when you are creating an effective improvisational quilt. So I like that. Um, this really spoke to me, don't fear wasting fabric, okay? Because sometimes when you're making an improvisational project, you may not like the block that you made, you might cut it up more, you might have to add more fabric to it. That's just kind of the nature of the beast. So don't worry about wasting fabric, okay? Because I do that a lot of times too when I'm making my samples <laughs> for my YouTube videos, I will worry about, oh, what if that, you know, that didn't work, it didn't look very good, I have to use other fabric. That's just the way it goes. And actually, if you're making things from scraps, you've probably got way more scraps than you'll ever use up in all your projects, at least I do. <laughs> okay. This is interesting too. How do you know it's finished? Because working on an improv quilt is not the same as following a pattern. When we follow a pattern or we follow, you know, whether it's a separate pattern or a pattern in a book, we know when it's finished, right? Because it tells you, you know, make 12 blocks, put them together with two borders, duh, you're done. Not so with improvisational quilts because they could go on and on and on, okay? So I love how she talks about that. How do you know it's finished? That's really important to know and when you're working with improv a lot of times you have to have your blocks up on a design wall or some people have them on the floor if you don't have a, a big enough design wall and you have to kind of let them sit there for a while you may take photos of them as well but you kind of have to let it sit and you have to think about it or she says let it marinate before you know if it's done or not so you may look at it and say something's missing you might add something to it you might take something away from it and you'll get to a point finally where you kind of think yeah that looks fine, that looks good, we're done. All right, so she talks about that. And it's something that I think you have to make a few of these quilts before you get the whole improvisational quilting thing. But speaking about it in this book is really good because I think it's something that a lot of people will struggle with when they're making their first improv quilt. And then of course, you have to quilt your quilt, right? When it's finally done, when it's got to that stage where you think, yes, this is it, I'm done now with this quilt top, you still have to quilt it, right? So she talks about quilting in here. She talks about different, again, thinking about different ways you can quilt it. It is kind of a modern looking quilt. So keeping the quilt design simple works best, but she actually gives you examples. So I love this. Of course, I, you know, I hate it when you see that quilt is desired. I like having some suggestions. And so she does that in this book as she does in her other book as well. And by the way, if you want to see the video, the review, I should say on that particular book, check above and check below. Did I already say that? I might have, but it bears repeating. And I just did if I said it before. She also talks about graffiti style quilting in this, which is fun too. So you can combine a lot of different motifs together because why not? It's fun. All right, so she actually goes into choosing batting and thread at the end. And then the fun part is always seeing a student gallery or a gallery of her projects at the end because this could give you ideas about what people are putting together, uh, great ideas for colors that people have put together, okay? And there's some really different quilts. I mean, you look at something like this, totally different than something like that, for example. So it's always good to see other people's work. And I also often find that this inspires me when I'm making my own projects, whether it's colors they put together or shapes in this particular case. So if you are looking for a good book on improvisational quilting where there is actually guided exercises in it so you can work along and make your own improv project, I highly recommend Adventures in Improv Quilts. If you wanna get your own copy, check the description below because I have a link there and you can see more details on the book as well. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and be sure to share it with your quilting friends. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And before you go, check out these other videos I've included just for you. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.